Good morning, everyone. My name is Chandler Milam. I'm the Chief Development Officer at YWCA Minneapolis. I'm really excited to have uh, Katie Rinhani, our Vice President of Girls and Youth, here this morning to speak at Coffee and Conversations. Katie is going to be talking about our Beacons Network and what all the work they do is. Uh, they do a rather extensive amount of stuff that is really, really cool. And just I'm very excited to hear more about it from Katie because I always really enjoy every time she talks about it. Um, but I want to give you a little bit of background about Katie first which is that Katie joined the YWCA in 2018, um, and prior to that has over 10 years of experience working with youth in a variety of ways, doing educational, therapeutic, and youth enrichment. And since joining the YWCA in 2018, Katie's really worked um, to expand our girls and youth programming, to increase accessibility, to enhance the experience for girls and youth, and to really think about ways that we can meet the needs of our youth, especially during the really difficult last few years that they've gone through and the traumas associated with that. Uh, Katie holds a BA in Gender and Women's Studies and minor in Psychology from the College of St. Benedict. And I would be remiss if I did not say that uh, Katie also enjoys spending time with her partner and her dogs, is an avid cook, and has a deep love for sports, particularly professional basketball, so you may occasionally catch her at one of the Minnesota Lynx games. Um, but without further ado, I will turn it over to Katie to talk a little bit about the Beacons Network. We're really excited to have you this morning, Katie. It's great to be here. Thanks for that intro. Now I'm all excited. I just want to talk about WNBA, but I'll focus <laughs> on girls and youth. Um, yeah, as Chandler said, I'm the vice president of the girls and youth department. We have a wide range of unique programs that we offer throughout Minneapolis and the surrounding cities. This past year, we served over 900 youth across all of our programs. And each program is unique in the way that they deliver and offer programs. So in the past Coffee and Conversations, we've been talking about our partnership with Girls Inc. The last one, we spoke about Contact Plus, which is really focusing in on our sexuality education programming. And this one is really focused on Beacons. Beacons is one of the largest programs that we offer and one of the ones that sometimes doesn't get as much shine as the other programs because it's out at schools, you don't see it, but in those schools, Beacons is a premier part of the, the day experience for students who participate in Beacons. So to back up, Minneapolis is really fortunate to be part of, or to have their own Beacons network. Beacons started in New York City back in like 1991 or something. And really the idea was how to create spaces. We have all these, we have all these empty buildings as soon as the school day ends, what can we do with them? Where can, can we create a space for youth and families to go? In 1998, we started our own Beacons Network here in Minneapolis, and we've been functioning ever since then. There are four founding youth-serving organizations that are part of the Minneapolis Beacons Network. YMCA of the Greater North, they're the holders of the grant, and they facilitate, um, they, they're the leaders of the network. It also includes our, ourselves, YWCA, the Boys and Girls Club, <clears throat> And Minneapolis community education. Between the four, we're extremely collaborative. It's a genuine partnership. We're all there to support each other, to work together, to help um, ideate on different ways that we can serve youth in our communi community. So across, um, I spoke about the Minneapolis, Richfield also recently added their own Beacons Network. And so now between the Minneapolis and the Richfield Beacons Network, we're up to, I think, 17 different sites, different centers. They're serving more than 4,000 youth every year um, in grades K through eight. Uh, the way that, when we think of the Minneapolis Beacons Network in comparison to the other networks like New York City or San Francisco or Denver, like the, the, the premier focus of the Minneapolis Network is on leadership development. And so the main way that that happens is well, there's like a, there's a Beacons leadership team that's really the, the focal point of this leadership development, but it's also just through how we incorporate youth voice. Youth voice is a critical component of the Beacons experience. If youth are saying that they want something, if youth are saying they're experiencing something, we see them experts in their own experience, and we're there to offer supports or to offer groups or clubs that meet their needs. And so through by listening to their, their self-advocacy, they start to learn that their voice matters and that helps develop them as leaders, as people who could be creators of change in their communities. In our Beacons um, programs um, last year and our YWCA programs, we serve 431 youth between summer and school year programs. 
We have two centers right now. We are at Hmong International Academy, which is a K-5 elementary school. We are also at Franklin Middle School, which serves sixth through eighth graders. In the summer, we do collaborative experiences with some of our partners to offer camps. And this summer, we're over at Lucy Laney, working directly with Minneapolis Community Ed staff to provide a summer camp to youth. When we think about beacons and the network, we're really looking at being like offering a coordinated vision for Minneapolis youth. All of these networks, all of these organizations are gonna are offering program regardless whether or not they're part of beacons. And so here, when we're part of the network, we're really trying to work together to offer, like I said, a coordinated vision, offer something together that we're all working on that's working towards common goals. So a, a primary component of Beacon, something that's really unique to it, is how much it is a true partner to Minneapolis Public Schools and the level of teacher support that we get in the, in the youth experience. So just to back up, like just to say, like this is what it looks like to be a Beacons participant. Come fall, youth can register. They can stay after school every single day. The program is 100% free to youth. They have an hour where they spend time doing um, alternative learning with a school teacher. So teachers volunteer to stay after school and they provide a full hour of programming to youth. It's nice for teachers because it's a chance for them to step out of maybe uh, more structured learning um, uh, to something more passion-based, more based off what youth interest is. So they could do robotics club. They might have a math club, but they're doing it in a different way than what their textbooks say. Um, they might be exploring STEM or science in various ways. So that's what the, when the teachers stay after they get to pursue these, um, just a little bit uh, more fun uh, styles of learning. And then the second hour is a beacons hour. And that's where we hear from youth. What do you want? And then we create clubs around that, um, uh, what, they, what they're requesting. So clubs can look like anything from Dungeons and Dragons club to swim club to uh, STEM club to art club. There's a wide range of types of clubs. The, it's, it's, it's really limitless. There's cheerleading, there's DJ club, boxing club. I mean, it's just what youth want. We find partners and we figure out a way to offer that club at the school. So our staff are embedded at their school sites. And so they're truly seen as a pillar of their school community. They are there all day. They have offices at the school. Students can drop in and out of their offices throughout the day. If there's, um, a shortage somewhere. Our Beacon staff are usually there during the school day to help fill a need. They are there at all school events. They have regular meetings with school administration and counselors. They truly are a part of the school community. So while they're YWCA staff, they are they spend the vast majority of their time at their school sites and they're there throughout the school day and then stay after. So they can be long days at times, but it truly, our, our team is so passionate about each of their individual sites, that it's harder to pull them away than to, um, the, like they wanna be at their school sites. Um, let's see, what else can I say? So last year, or a typical year in Beacons is, like I said, it starts in October and it goes through May. The students have those two learning hours as we talked about, and then they, um, they also, we have a partnership with the nutrition services. So youth receive uh, a super snack, it's called a really heavy snack after school for free. We also have a partnership with transportation. So they receive free transportation that brings them um, home at the end of their beacons, their beacons time. So this is a chance for parents to sign their children up for beacons and to know from Monday through Thursday, every single day from you know, mid-October through mid-May that their, that their student has a place to go after school um, for free. And so parents, they can come and go as they want. A student could come one time, they could come 30 times, they could come 90 times. It's really up to what their interest level is, what they want. The goal is to um, serve them as comprehensively as possible by offering clubs that are of interest and of value to them and to their families. Um, let's see, so going back to the leadership component, the network offers every single year something called the Beacons Leadership Camp. The Beacons Leadership Camp, it's held at Camp Itahapi, a YMCA camp. And this is also all for free for our participants. Every school brings somewhere from 10 to 12 students to do an overnight at a sleepaway camp. Um, they do this over MEA weekend. And for most youth, this is the one time that they 
uh, spend time sleeping in a cabin, spend time outdoors in this way. For some, it's the first time that they have gone away and had an overnight um, experience of any sort. And then the experience is led by the high school beacons leadership team, which we call the big homies. And so the big homies, they put together the whole format for like what the week or for what the couple days will look like. They design the chants and cheers. They write out, they, they, they write um, beacon songs. Um, and it's really the chants and cheers thing. So they'll write new songs and record them and put on a CD. And then they'll teach all the students these new songs or the new chants and cheers. Um, it's really just this way to get, bring so much energy into the outdoors. Uh, I have a big wilderness background and it's very different than what this experience is. My wilderness background is um, what most people would think of when they think of a wilderness experience. It's tense, it's maybe quiet, there's a reverence. In this experience, it's about how to have youth feel ownership over space and feel comfort in a space. And so we try to replicate what their day-to-day -day might look like. Is music a part of your life? Music will be a part of this experience. And so we actually bring a DJ out into the woods and we have a DJ and we have microphones and speakers all set up. And it's really a chance for youth to feel like they get to be themselves versus trying to have to be something else to fit into this wilderness experience. And that's really the Beacon's way. The Beacon's way is to empower youth into being the person, the authentic person that they are and to know that they belong in space. And so every space that we create is based off who the youth are. We recently um, went through at the last Beacons Leadership Camp back in October, they pulled the elementary group together and then they pulled the middle school group together. And um, then they also had the big homie group. So we had a K-12 representation where they did a, um, uh, like a project to try to draw out youth voice around some specific topics, how youth are engaging in their community, what their needs are, what they see as highs, what they see as struggles, um, just to get like, what's the youth perspective of being a Minneapolis uh, young person. And they thoughtfully identified best parts of their community, their sources of their happiest moments, their challenges, areas where school and community change are needed. And then the, the picture starts to emerge, like the themes that are being reflected through how young people in Minneapolis are moving and experiencing this world. And the key themes were concepts of care and understanding, it's self-acceptance, inclusion and belonging, identity, mental health, stress, sadness, joy. So a lot of times people have, I get asked all the time, how are youth doing, especially after COVID or after uh, George Floyd's murder, there's all these all these people, how are youth doing? How are they doing? And it's, they're, they're struggling. They're, all, they're also doing well because they are full humans. And so they're having a full human experience. So they can see these moments of joy and they can see these moments of feeling sense of belonging. They're also stressed. There's also struggles um, with motivation or wondering if this community is being designed with their future in mind. And so as we're in Beacons and we're thinking about the way we continue to grow and develop beacons, we're really thinking about how can we support youth in healthy coping, um, in um, having a healthy relationship with adults that really see and value them, helping them feel more connected to their school, which is their primary day-to-day -day community base. And so we're really trying to impact these pieces that youth are telling us in a healthy way and help draw that drive them forward. There's data around the effect on, of beacons. Um, Beacons, participate, dem Beacons participants demonstrate better school attendance than non-participants from similar backgrounds. They, on average, attend six more days of school a year than their counterparts. Beacons participants are statistically significantly more likely to graduate high school in four years, 91% um, compared to 74% of non-participants from similar backgrounds. Um, and then there's retention. They're more likely to graduate compared to non-participant students. Um, and they're uh, 9.5 times more likely than their peers to be retained and so to advance to the next grade. And those types of things leading, uh, anything that leads to that graduation leads to better you know, job, job um, attainment, um, post-secondary options just open up in a different way. And so we see these as significant pieces for youth. Um, yeah, so beacons, I think just to, it'll be easier to open this up, I think, to some questions, but really it's it's centered so strongly on, on youth leadership, youth voice, youth choice, having healthy relationships with adults, 
adults being in the school to offer a different type of relationship than a teacher and administrator can offer. There's something unique about a youth worker who can be embedded in the school day, which is one of the primary goals of YWCA youth programming. Many of our programs operate during the school day, just trying to provide an alternative relationship for youth. And, and then the comprehensive nature of Beacons is unmatched, um, especially for a program that's 100% free. Last, last school year, our participants at 431 on average attended 91 hours of programming. During the summer, when it's a more compressed time, they average 71 hours of programming. Um, and so it's just a highlight. We have a lot of time with these youth. They really grow up with beacons. If you're on the north side, you can go to a north side elementary, to a middle school and a high school, and they will all be beacons. And that common thread is something that even if you're changing schools can help youth feel more connected. And again, the whole goal is keeping them going, keeping them coming to school um, and, and ultimately graduating high school, feeling like they are a part of something. It'll be easier if there's any um, questions for me to go into things more. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Chandler, if you have any any questions. Yeah, uh, I'd love to start us off with a couple questions that I have for you. One of which is you and I have talked um, outside of this conversation about the importance of youth spaces and especially yeah. today kind of with the absence of youth spaces, how that impacts youth not having a place together. So what Right. I guess, can you talk a little bit about the impact of having this space where kids feel like after school they have somewhere they can belong for a couple hours when often they're getting kind of kicked out of public spaces and they're not really having the opportunity together with other kids their age outside of school hours? Yeah, that's a great question. So much gets put on youth. Youth are the problem. Youth are um, violent. Youth are uh, stealing cars. Youth are doing whatever they're doing. They're getting into trouble, right? Um, where do you, where can youth go? That's, that's always the question back. It's like youth are, youth are responding to the environment that we have created for them and that we have opened up to them. I have this, uh, it's, it's silly, but these, the, the, the P's, the P's are what keeps its policing, its policies, its price. Um, the youth are being kept out of spaces because of all of these different components. And so thinking about beacons, Again, the opportunities really, there's so many opportunities for what we can do to create the place for youth to be, that they belong, that's free, and that's designed by them. And so if you go and look at your, your park in your neighborhood, are youth at the park? What time of day are they at the park? What is the demographics of your neighborhood? What is the income of your neighborhood? Look at neighborhoods that aren't the same as yours. Are the parks being utilized in the same, in the same way? So you think of parks and libraries, all these public spaces that are meant to be places for youth, and more and more they're being pushed out or kept out of these spaces. Beacons truly is trying to create space for youth to feel like they have a place that they can belong. We could do more. To do more requires more funding. I think there's there's pieces of understanding like the cost of staffing, the cost of contractors, pieces like what it does to maintain a free program. But again, these buildings sit empty once the school bell fin rings. Are there things we could do on weekends? Are there things we could do in later hours? Are there ways that we could em embrace the full family and types of programming? Those are the opportunities for growth. But as you said, Chandler, there's less and less space for youth to be where they get to just go and just be themselves. It's often around if they're somewhere, maybe they've had to pay to be there, or it might be like a scripted activity, not something where they kind of just get to, sometimes they just want to hang out. So again, that's part of the beacons. It, it may feel different. So we we offer scripted, more you know, more regimented curriculums that we have than that we meet. Beacons intentionally doesn't have a curriculum. There's not a standard way of doing beacons. The standard way is incorporating youth voice and choice into program. And so <clears throat> an example, uh, Franklin Middle School last year, um, video games, video games are very popular. Esports is this whole new branch. So we have an esports club and it, youth stay after school and they play video games with each other. And that may feel counterintuitive, like, oh, should we be removing screen time, things like that. If that's what they wanna do, they will leave school and they'll go home and play video games. They'll be talking to whoever they're talking to. Here they're in their school system and their school space. They're getting a snack. They're with friends. They have a healthy adult presence in the room to maybe help guide conversations, guide conflict um, and resolution, things along those lines. And they also might try something new just by nature of 
there might be a day they don't want to play video games. That might be the day they go do open gym or go to swimming or something like that. Yeah, that's really cool. One of my favorite things I think about Beacons and our girls and youth programming overall is the way in which it meets students where they're at. It doesn't try and kind of box them into this idea that we as adults have about what it's like to be 12 years old and what you need to be doing, especially because the world changes so frequently. And especially in this age of technology and with the pandemic, it seems like even now the experience um, that I would have had back in middle school, which wasn't that long ago, would be completely different to somebody that's there now because of all the social media and everything else that you have to contend with. Um, so I guess I'd be curious to learn a little bit more about how do you kind of, or what do you do to kind of adapt programs or address issues that maybe come up throughout the year? Because like you mm -hmm. said, things like George Floyd's murder or school closures over the last couple of years, you know, you've been thrown a lot of kind of variables and I'm sure had to adjust programming a lot. Mm -hmm. on the fly how has that kind of struggle been to adjust programming and incorporate youth voices um, into that process as you go yeah uh, first it's important to acknowledge the work of the, the beacons team the direct service people who are attempting every day to implement things that are meeting youth where they're at this speaks for people across the network other organizations as well it's it's truly a, a, a it's so hard to do what they are doing and they were relentless and they just they just keep going to try to find the, the right thing that's that meets youth so <clears throat> i think you know going back to pandemic there was there would be all these meetings like what can we do we actually got together as a collaborative with minneapolis parks and rec uh the libraries and we actually started these pop-up parks like across the city so it was just our beacons teams we're moving around the city um every week we're at a new site we brought in um, nutrition services and we just had youth workers out at parks to play games and we had you know the speakers up and the music going and we had uh, resources and booths and things like that set up so again sometimes it's just to be out there to let people know like we're here we're thinking about you um the network got a van and they drove around and they dropped off kits at people's homes um we had pickups at our school sites for kits and then you could join us online and we might do a cooking class together or if you want to play if you want to play games with Mr. P, you can join at four o'clock and, and, and he'll just play computer games with you. So it was just anything we could do to let youth know like we're here for you. At that same time, we were also letting parents and youth know, do you just need a touch point? What, what could we offer you? And so some people asked like, it would be really helpful if I could get a phone call once a week from somebody, I just need somebody to talk to. And so that was that was new for us during the pandemic was just just giving youth a call to you know, see where they were at with their assignments, see how they were doing emotionally, see if there's any resources that we could help connect them to. And really, again, just be a part of a network of support and another voice for a young person. In our day-to-day -day program, the way that we incorporate youth voice, there's typically a survey that goes out at the beginning of the year um, where youth are just circling or writing in clubs that they would like to see. Um, at a high school level, it, the youth, um, we don't have a high school site at this time, but like they'll coordinate with other um, students and then they'll they'll go and present this option to like start a club. Um, but yeah, at our schools, it's mostly youth through, us, through the surveys, like saying what they want. Youth also communicate, all people communicate with their presence. Um, and so if, if we start a club and you start seeing the participation dwindle, it means maybe we need to look at it a little differently. Um, we do regular check-ins with youth. They, again, being in the school, you start to hear from youth. If you're sitting at lunch, you hear how youth are talking, what their interests are, what kind of music they want, what is the latest TikTok thing, whatever it might be, we can bring that into Beacons. It's not for us to say, don't do TikTok. It's to say, how can I learn the dance with you? Um, and because that's what they want to do. It's really what they want to do. You can watch youth and see what they're interested in, watch what they like, and you can just bring it to them versus saying that you don't want to do it or you don't think it's the right thing to be doing or whatever that might be. So we do we do all of those pieces. Um, at YWCA, we have a really comprehensive evaluation um, process that also adds, uh, helps us draw out youth voice in different ways. We do various things like um, last summer, uh, we had youth uh, that were like photojournalists. 
And so for like, they could do the a camera club. And so they got digital cameras and they could go around and the prompt is really like take pictures that make you think of beacons. And so through that, you get to see like how a youth might say like, this is how I think about beacons versus like the pictures I might take to represent beacons. And from that, you get to see like the importance of, again, swimming. Swimming is such a big one. To have a pool at Franklin Middle School is a real gift. And so making sure that we have lifeguards and things like that so that we can offer swimming through the year. So those are the primary ways. And then the other ways is goes back to that piece of um, listening to the Beacons leadership team. Uh, I, get, I don't think I spoke about that as much as I could have. I spoke about the camp, but also each year at each school site, they develop their own Beacons leadership team. And then in the spring, um, a uh, couple like they probably have maybe six meetings or something like that they go to different school sites so at when the school day ends the beacons leadership team they'll go to whatever elementary or middle school is hosting beacons leadership team and it's all the schools come together at those sites and then they host a, a meeting with those young leaders and so that's another way for us to draw out youth voice at a at a larger level yeah, I really love the opportunity, and you've talked about it, the fact that the YWCA or Minneapolis and the Minneapolis Beacons Network as a whole is very focused around that concept of leadership development and kind of empowering youth to take charge of yeah. you know, their own lives and learn to advocate for themselves, which I think is very important and translates <laughs> to kind of civic engagement after school and right. just, you know, nobody knows you better than you do. That's exactly um, right. mm -hmm. And one of the things I wanted to ask you about, because you've talked about it a few times, is this is such a collaborative network. It's, right. you know, a lot of different, organ the four different organizations working together. And then you talked about having partners to do some of these clubs. You know, what is that sort of, I guess, spirit of collaboration, you know, mean to you? Like, how powerful is it just having these other organizations kind of united around a common goal and really working together to support one another? Mm -hmm. I've worked in a fair number of industries and cities. I've moved around quite a bit. I moved to Minneapolis um, five years ago or so. And this is a unique experience that I have here in terms of the, collabor the collaboration of youth serving agencies as a whole. Um, the, I think what it's not just beacons in Minneapolis. That's that's I think a, a core component of it. We're actually drawn together. There's the Minis there's the Minneapolis After School Advisory Council, which is led by um, uh, this team from the city of Minneapolis. And so that that team really like pulls together all these different youth serving agencies, and and we have a, a regular meeting once a month. The Beacons managers, they get together at least once once a month for, for their meeting. A lot of that meeting is just relationship building so that mm -hmm. you feel comfortable having a person that you can call or email at any time with a question because now I have a relationship. So I think it's that way that we, youth workers are so fun to, to be around in my opinion, I'm a youth worker, so I think I'm fun to be around. But youth workers, I think are, are fun to be in like work relationships with because we take our tenants of youth work into like how we live out also our, our work days with um, adults. And so the having a warm welcome, doing icebreakers, learning fun facts, like being silly, like trying new things, mm -hmm. like all our things, doing reflections at the end of, of time. Those are all things that we bring into youth work. And so they mm -hmm. naturally just come into our our day-to-day -day work. And so I would say like that's that's like the spirit of it. I know at any time I could pick up, I could pick up the phone and call somebody from a long list of organizations to ask, like, how are you doing this? What are your youth mm -hmm. saying? What are your staff doing? Are you struggling with this? And I do. I was texting with somebody last night from one of our from one of our partner organizations. Um, and we we're celebrating something together. So it really feels like we are all a part of it versus competing against each other. Our common goal is to serve youth in this city versus how can I serve these youth versus how they're serving these youth. It's really what can, how can we all work together to do this collective piece? Oh, you're I love that sense of collaboration. Um, and I'm curious what if, you know, people are interested in just knowing how they can better serve youth workers in the community as a whole or how they can better Mm -hmm. show support to them as they've, like you said, they've dealt with a lot over the last couple of years. It's a lot of changes, a lot of adjustments to things. Um, how can people support youth workers? What, you know, does that look like? Is that just people showing up um, to volunteer? Is that people engaging with them or reaching out if you know somebody personally? What, what are some ways that you think we could do a better job maybe of supporting people in this work? 
Yeah, I think if you if you know a youth worker, thank a youth worker. It's the same. We talk about um, healthcare workers, teachers, these critical these critical roles that we have. A youth worker falls right into that. They um, maybe don't have the licensing to be a teacher. They might not be licensed to be a child care worker, but they are still doing direct service work every single day with youth in our community. So I think acknowledging um, the work that they do, um, it's passion based work, um, and. And then I think on a larger level, it's advocating, advocating for programming for out of school time programs, advoca advocating for funding, um, recognizing that the primary goal of for most of us is to we're, we're trying so hard to create as much free programming as possible so that we have access for youth. It's related to funding. And so as as you hear community talk about um, maybe increased um, uh, crime or something, one look and see like where it stems from, like think about the root cause of it. What, what could youth need? Where, what, what could we offer them? It's often resources, it's space, it's programs, it's healthy relationships. It's all of these things to help connect them to a community. If you're a bored young person, you're gonna find something to do. So let's find something to do that's more productive. That's tied to funding. So supporting legislation, donating, um, and then connecting us to um, people with uh, maybe some some strengths that they could bring to program, a volunteer or a contractor who could lead a unique type of program, whether you're a boxing instructor or a robotics instructor, or uh, you know how to do sewing, um, you know how to do hair. Hair is a big one. These kids, they wanna sit around and with mannequins and learn how to do hair, which is great. Know why? Because that turns into a job at some point. So I think it's just, it's it's, really seeing that there's so many ways that you could offer your time, your voice or your money that would support these programs. Yeah, and I just have one last question for you, which is as you kind of move forward and we're trying to build up the Beacons Network and the other things that are kind of um, going on in the Twin Cities with youth work, where do you see these opportunities for growth, especially as it relates to the Beacons Network? Kind of how do you see the opportunity to expand or grow that impact so that more youth are able to access it? One is the biggest one right now is that the Beacons Network has a um, grant out, uh, a request out to expand programming. So we're hoping to be expanding into new schools this fall. It's gonna be contingent on um, funding. The part of this, um, part of this growth opportunity that's built into this, into this um, grant proposal is expanding our partnership. We're looking to also, so we have our four founding organizations. We're also looking to pull in Pillsbury United to do workforce readiness training. Um, and we have a partnership that's just been established with Minneapolis College. Minneapolis College, their president um, was looking around at the at their school environment. It tends to be a commuter school. It's, um, it's, it's really not known for it's uh, being people in, in community together. And wanted it to be more like that, a more uh, a college experience where you're where you feel like you're a part of this community versus just this place I drive to and leave each day. And so we actually have some beacons, um, people from the Beacons Network over at Minneapolis College, and they're they've kicked off um, the Beacons 2.0. And so there we're trying to expose high school youth to PSEO options at Minneapolis College. We're trying to expose them to um, a very underknown um, opportunity for free pro for for free um, tuition at Minneapolis College when they graduate. So again, just trying to build that bridge and that network of saying you have all of this right here for you. And if you go through, you go to elementary, middle school, high school, you can go to college and be a Beacons participant that entire time, or have the experience of being part of a community in the way that Beacons is about. So those are our growth opportunities: is continuing to expand. Um, into 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 post-secondary yeah that sense of community is so important and i can completely see how having that at a commuter school can make all the difference for students you know even going to college to graduate or to attend class to just feel like they have that sort of support system that they've had for years continuing into that part of their life where there's so much change happening right it makes a big difference say so, and that's the same for work workforce readiness programming mm -hmm. is um, how can you feel empowered to one, know how to get a job, how to build a resume, how to search, how to search for jobs, how to build careers versus just having jobs. There's so many, there's so many components to when you, you when you're a young person thinking about what your next stages of life are. And there's so many opportunities. If it might not be college, it might be college, but either way, you need these, 
you need these foundational skills of, of how to be an employee, how to search mm -hmm. for something that's meaningful to you that you want to, um, that, you know, supports your livelihood as, a, as an adult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, I really love that you put in there the, it doesn't have to be college, because I really do love the way that Beacons allow students to be themselves, and that the programming is really just focused around on giving them the skills and tools to be successful, whatever path they choose. Because right. I, I think that's so much better than often kind of the narrative where they just kind of get forced into here's what an ideal future looks like instead of, you know, what do you, you want for yourself and how can we help you get it? That's right. And that's where I think using empowerment based language is uh, as much as people can think about and use their language in an empowerment based way um, versus a deficit based way mm -hmm. like youth youth are youth are good they might be going through stuff they, they're going through things that are challenging they're going through things that are that are definitely hard and we're not giving them skills we just might be creating a platform for them to hone and and test out skills that they already have mm -hmm. so it's that idea of like without me you can't do it without beacons you can't do it you can like youth youth are youth are incredible and they'll and and they know what they're doing but also how do we create spaces where of safety, of where resources are available, where maybe they get to take risks in a different way, um, and and try out different things that are really true to who they are? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in a in a in a safe space, safety is so critical. I really love that. Well, that's all for my questions. I do want to open it up because uh, I know we have a few people with us on the Zoom call this morning. Just if anybody else. Uh, has a question uh, that they'd like to ask, um, you could either put it in the chat or if you want to unmute yourself and ask a question, we'd love to hear from you as well. Katie, my name's Clarissa and I joined a little late, so I apologize if you covered this, but I'm wondering how you started on your career path and your interest in working with youth. Yeah, nice to meet you, Clarissa. Thanks for coming this morning. I um, I have a, a pretty unique background. I was raised in a home that provided foster care. So my parents started foster care um, when I was four years old and through their 26 year career in foster care, they've had over 300 kids come, come and stay at the house for anywhere from one night to two and a half years. So my, my my upbringing is um, non-traditional and I don't know many people that have a comparable experience. Um, so I knew early on that I was probably going down the route of social services or human services, but didn't want to be a, a tr like a social worker in the true sense of um, like an MSW or things like that. Um, so after college, I, um, I, I honestly went abroad for a year and I taught and that was um, kicked me off on a, on a over a decade of, of wandering around and trying different things. So I taught abroad in some in different countries for a couple of years. I um, ended up doing a lot of wilderness things and wound up in wilderness therapy in U Utah for four years. And through my time there, I really started to understand just how much I enjoyed um, program leadership. I realized my impact I felt like I could have a different impact by coaching staff versus doing the direct service. Um, I believe very strongly in direct service. It was just kind of how I was finding my, my pathway or, or what my goals were. And then I moved to Seattle and I um, uh, was overseeing after school enrichment programming there. And that's where I really started to feel like I was finding something I believed in, work that was directly impacting the community I lived in. Um, I remember at some point in my uh, career, feeling like I was wandering and was aimless. And then when I really reflected back to every job I've had, besides being working at a pizza place, that every job I've had was working for youth and young adults. Um, well, pizza is kind of for youth and young adults. That's fair. That's fair. At, at its root, don't you think? That's fair. I think that's, that's a good one. So yeah, I mean, ultimately, I just love, um, I, I truly, I just believe in youth. And I grew up in a home where it was rooted in Again, safety. My my house, my the way my parents spoke about about our our home to to kids was this is a space where you're safe. This is a, a place where you get to be a kid. Um, here are really clear boundaries and structures so that you don't have to worry about them and you can just focus on who you are in this world. My mom once said, "Being a kid is so chaotic already. So imagine trying to figure out where your food's coming from or if your brother has diapers. If you can put those things into place, you're going to allow the kid just to focus on." finding their place in the world, which is chaotic enough. That's awesome. Thanks. I hate it when people tell me this, but you should write a book. <laughs> I bet it would be a really good book. 
<laughs> I appreciate that, Clarissa. <laughs> Maybe even just write it for you. <laughs> I'll just keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm too. I'd rather talk, but everyone says keep writing it down. So there you go. That's like fair. I said, yeah. I'm I'm jumping the advice and I'm passing it on to you. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> No, Thanks it's really in, it's really inspiring work, and it's very cool that it started out from your family. I bet your parents are really proud of you. Absolutely, and I talk about my mom a lot at work. <laughs> she very cool. Is a really great mentor. Cool. Thank you for taking my question. Of course. Does anybody else have a question or any other questions uh, that they'd like to ask Katie? In the meantime, I will say, Katie, you should definitely, at the very least, do a podcast. You'd be an excellent podcaster. Thanks, Chandler. <laughs> you could be a guest. I would for sure subscribe to that podcast. <laughs> I second the vote for a podcast. <laughs> Thank you, Clarissa. <laughs> if there's two votes, then it's a go, I think. Well, it's a go. Well, that's I, how it works. That's that's I go yeah. to anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. how it works, Katie. We're in. <laughs> yeah, you got to do it now. <laughs> I like that we've talked this whole time about empowering uh, people to make their own decisions. And here we are telling you that you have to do a podcast and you don't have a choice. I'm, but, I'm, I'm receiving it well, don't worry. It's what the community people. needs. I'm the right audience for this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if nobody has any other questions for Katie, Katie, thank you so much for your time today and for really all the wonderful work that you are doing. Um, through our girls and youth programming, it just touches lives in such comprehensive ways. Um, and one of my favorite things about my job is that I get to uh, go and see some of the work that we do. And one of my favorite things to do is go and see some of that girls and youth work because you really see how much those relationships mean to those kids and how trusting they are of the adults that they spend time with and how they feel like they can ask questions and be themselves. And I know that that's a really empowering space for them. So thank you for all the incredible work you do. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you all for coming and hearing more about Beacons this morning. Well, thank you all very much for attending. Um, I hope you all will stay connected with some of our other YWCA Minneapolis programming. Um, you can also check out our website to find out more about um, our Beacons programming. And we will also be sending out uh, an email message uh, next week with a recording uh, link for this video and also some additional ways that you can stay connected with Beacons and our other girls and youth programming. So thank you all so much to join us or for joining us and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.